What do those oil numbers mean? Cold nights, hot engines, MPG versus protection. Let me break it down. I'm Morgan Lane, and you're watching Recall Roadmap with Morgan. I've spent years testing oils in cold soak rooms and hot load dynos, and here's the simple truth. The first number with the W tells you how easily the oil flows at cold start. The second number is how thick it stays when the engine is hot. Those two pull in different directions. Thin helps you start. Thick helps you protect when hot. Industry experts remind us that viscosity affects fuel economy and engine wear. So your choice matters more than most people think. SAEJ 300 sets the rules. 0 W oils must pass colder cranking tests than 5 W oils. That's why 0 W20 can make winter starts feel easier. And yes, thin oil can save fuel, but the gain is small, often less than 3%. Tip. Below roughly minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, a 0 W grade makes starts noticeably easier and kinder to your battery. Today, I'll show you when to stick with the exact grade on your oil cap and when a tiny change might make sense. How do these numbers really change your daily drive? First, let's see what happens in deep freeze starts. First up, picture a brutal winter morning. You turn the key and the engine fights thick oil like it's molasses. Here's where 0W20 shines. How much easier does a cold engine start with it? A lot. It's built to pass a colder lab test than 5W oils. SAE J300 requires 0W oils to meet a tougher cold crank standard, down to around minus 35 degrees Celsius, while 5W oils are tested warmer. That means 0W20 stays much thinner in the cold. Thinner oil reduces drag on the starter, needs fewer amps from your battery, and coats moving parts faster. In shop trials, 0W oil can cut start time by more than 10% at sub-zero temps. It's the difference between pouring water and pouring honey at zero degrees. As Steve Swedberg has noted, oil viscosity affects fuel economy and engine wear, and nowhere is that more obvious than at startup. Most engine wear happens right when you crank, so faster flow is real protection. Tip. If winter temps near minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, absolutely choose a zero W grade for smoother starts and happier bearings. That handles freezing mornings. But what happens when your engine is cooking hot under a heavy load? Second, let's crank up the heat. Hot summer afternoon, long hill, maybe you're hauling a trailer, oil temps soar. What happens to zero W versus five W under that stress? At high temperature and high shear, Film strength is everything. A typical 5W30 carries a higher high temperature high shear viscosity, around 3.0 millipascal seconds, while many 0W20 oils are near 2.6. That extra thickness at operating temperature helps 5W30 hold pressure and maintain a protective film on bearings and cam lobes. In heavy load tests, 5W30 often reports several PSI higher oil pressure than 0W20, and that cushion matters for turbos and bearings. Many manuals even call out 5W30 for towing or extreme heat because it resists thinning and shear better. Tip. If you're towing, pushing steep grades, or driving in very hot weather, choose the thicker 5W30 if your manual allows it to keep pressure steady and parts safe. Thick oil guards you when the engine is working hardest. But what if your engine isn't hot and new anymore? What if it's old, a little loose, and starting to drink oil? Third, let's talk age and miles. Your car crosses 100,000 miles. It starts to tick on cold mornings, maybe burns a quart between changes. Should you run thicker oil now? It can help, if the engine and the manual allow it. As clearances open up with wear, a 5W30's higher viscosity fills the gaps better, builds steadier pressure, and can slow blow-by. Many mechanics suggest moving up one grade on high-mileage engines, and field reports often show oil consumption dropping by around 20% after a careful switch. I've seen phaser rattles calm down and tailpipe smoke ease when a worn engine got the right slightly thicker grade. But there's balance. 
go too thick and you can lose cold flow on winter starts. Tip. If you're burning oil or hearing new ticks, ask a trusted mechanic and check for technical service bulletins for your model. Move to 5W30 only if your owner's manual permits it. Sometimes that simple change can restore quiet and reduce top-offs. High mileage might nudge you thicker, but there's a bigger rule we all need to follow before any change. Let's talk about your oil cap and the manual. Fourth, the oil cap is not a suggestion. Your engine was designed and tested around a very specific viscosity and certification. Deviating can raise wear, trip emissions issues, or even risk warranty claims. Automaker approvals tie real oils to real tests. GM's latest Dexos guidance literally says to use the appropriate viscosity grade, and many modern approvals license only 0W20 and 5W30 in their current lineup. If you are under warranty or you have a turbo engine, the safest path is simple. Use exactly what the manual and the oil cap call for with the required API and ILSAC specs. Warranty inspectors look for that match. Your owner's manual often includes a viscosity chart showing what to use for temperature swings and special use. Some engines allow seasonal options, others do not. And remember, Oil chemistry affects emissions hardware. Using an outdated or off-spec formula can hurt your catalytic converter or timing chain. The takeaway, follow the manual first. We'll still talk trade-offs because thin oil is often sold as the fuel saver. How much does it really save you at the pump? Fifth, fuel economy. Thin 0W20 reduces drag, so it can help MPG. But does it save a lot over 5W30? Not really. Industry testing shows switching from 5W30 to 0W20 usually nets less than 3% improvement, and in real driving it's often closer to a half percent to 1%. That is smaller than what you can gain by setting proper tire pressure or easing off the throttle. As Steve Swedberg has highlighted, viscosity does affect fuel use, but the difference between these grades is modest. If your engine needs a stronger oil film for heat, towing, or miles, giving up a fraction of a percent in economy is a fair trade to prevent wear. Tip: Do not change grades expecting a dramatic MPG jump. Expect a tiny move, often under 2%. We will hit the most punishing case next, towing and high heat. Before we shift, if this kind of clear safety-first car advice helps you, please subscribe and share. It keeps me making deeper tests that protect your engine and your wallet. Now, let's push the oil even harder and see which grade holds up under real stress. Sixth, picture towing on a desert highway, near 100 degrees Fahrenheit, long hill, high RPM. This is when oil gets truly stressed. Which grade should you use? Under severe load, zero W20 can thin to the edge of its limit. I've watched oil pressure dip 5 to 10 psi on thin grades during long hot pulls, while 5W30 held steadier pressure and a stronger film. That cushion protects rod bearings, cam lobes, and turbo shafts when the engine is grinding hardest. Many truck and SUV manuals spell it out. For towing or extreme heat, use 5W30 if listed. The same logic applies to many turbo engines that live in high temperature zones. A little extra thickness at operating temperature gives you a margin. Tip! Whenever you tow, climb long grades, or drive in very hot weather, move to the thicker allowed grade from your manual to keep pressure up and wear down. Towing is tough enough on everything else. Do not underprotect your oil film. Okay, real life happens. What if you are low on oil and the right grade is not on the shelf? Can you mix in a close grade safely? Seventh, the emergency top off. You are almost out of oil, stores are closed, and your friend has 5W30 while your engine runs 0W20. Is a small mix okay? Usually, yes. If both oils meet the same modern spec, like API SP or ILSAC GF6, adding a small amount of the next closest grade is fine in a pinch. 
Think of it as a mild blend that nudges viscosity but does not break the protection window. The big risks come from large amounts or big gaps, like mixing 0W20 with very heavy oil. That can change cold flow or hot protection too much. Tip. Match the certification first, keep within one grade step, and plan a full oil change back to the approved grade when you can. Small top-offs are a reasonable short-term fix. Heavy mixing is not. And if your car is under warranty, go back to the exact grade and approval as soon as possible to keep your bases covered. Mixing small amounts can get you home. Now, how do you confirm that any change you made actually helped your engine? Eighth, verify your choice. You just switched from 0W20 to 5W30, or you topped off in a pinch. How do you know if it helps or hurts? You measure. Right after the change, listen closely on the first cold start. Any new ticks? Check the oil pressure gauge or data on the dash. A slightly slower crank in deep cold is normal with thicker oil, but pressure should stabilize quickly when warm. Next, track oil consumption for the next 1,000 miles. Mark the dipstick level every few hundred miles. If burning drops or startup noise fades, that's a win. If pressure falls at hot idle or the engine sounds unhappy, switch back. For the full picture, send a sample to a lab for used oil analysis. Many drivers see lower iron and copper when the viscosity matches the engine's needs. Tip. Keep a simple log with startup sound, hot idle pressure, fuel use, and consumption. It turns a guess into a plan. Tests will tell you if your grade is right. There's one more big piece though. The label's numbers matter, but so do the approvals behind them. Ninth, two bottles can both say 5W30, yet only one may truly protect your engine. Is grade more important than oil spec? Approvals matter just as much. API SP and ILSAC GF6 bring modern tests for wear, sludge control, chain wear, and low-speed pre-ignition. A current GF6 A5W30 is built to meet a higher high-temperature, high-shear target, typically at or above 3.0 millipascal seconds, while 0W20 lives closer to 2.6. On top of that, automaker approvals, like the latest Dexos, tie a specific formula to a specific viscosity and clearly call for the appropriate viscosity grade. Using an old, out-of-date oil can raise wear and even risk emissions trouble over time. Tip. Always use the latest API or ELSAC certification your manual calls for, and if your automaker lists an approval, get an oil that carries it. Grade alone is not enough. Quality and approvals finish the job. We've hit cold starts, heat, miles, towing, mixing, testing, and approvals. Let's wrap it all up with a clear checklist you can use today. Here's the bottom line. 0W20 makes cold starts easier and cuts startup wear. 5W30 holds a stronger oil film in heat, towing, and often in higher mileage engines. Fuel economy gains from thinner oil are real but small, usually under 3%. The rule that protects your engine and your wallet is simple. Follow your owner's manual first. Only tweak if you have a solid reason and then verify the results. Use this quick checklist. Under warranty or running a turbo, use the exact grade and the listed approval. Burning oil on zero to W20? Ask your mechanic Check for technical service bulletins and consider 5W30 only if the manual permits it. Live where winters bite hard? Zero W grades help with cold start wear. After any change, track startup sound, hot idle pressure, and oil level for 1,000 miles. And use your manual's viscosity chart before your next oil change. Log your startup sound and oil level after that change so you can see the effect for yourself. This is Recall Roadmap with Morgan, and I'm glad you spent time with me today. Thanks for watching. If this helped, please subscribe for more safety-first car advice.
Which scenario on our checklist matched your car, and what grade will you pick now?